Hi, welcome back to Lupini Builds. Um, today I wanted to show you some of the tools um, that I use uh, in the model making. So basically, similar to most tool tops around uh, where there's modeling going on, this is a, a dapping tool which gives me all different shapes and sizes uh, that I can use to create various shapes that I may require from time to time. The ever-present uh, holding arms that I've got three of these, uh, they're really uh, an essentiality when you need an extra pair of hands or two in the work that you're doing. There's a whole different range of pliers, um, cutters, um, I have a, also a very small uh, pencil, uh, propane pencil torch as well as a, uh, a larger one for different, for different applications. And then the ever-present Dremel tool. This is a very well engineered, beautiful device. This is a cordless model. There are many others that work. I have a range of different tools that we use to cut, grind, mold and shape. Uh, the measuring tools, ever present vernier, sometimes just a straightforward pair of um, dividers will do the trick. Uh, I have a large pair that uh, I use to do some measurements and things with to keep the scale persistent and then there's a smaller pair that I have for all the closer work. So this is basically what the tool board looks like um, and uh, it's funny that uh, you keep on using them as you go along there's no limit to how many tools you can have. Uh, one can never have enough tools in this modeling game. I also have a box here uh, with an assortment of um, different shapes and, and, and um, forms that if I need to make a particular shape around for a, um, sometimes a fuselage or a wing tip uh, or a cockpit section or a wheel arch or in the motor cars it could be a window surround then I'll be using all these different props and shapes and sizes here to give me all those different dimensions I'll simply bend the wire around this and uh, to give me the shape that I'm looking for. So that box there is always growing, there's always new tools coming into it and um, it grows all the time. So on the side here I have my uh, my soldering iron. Now this one here we'll get into more detail perhaps down the line. A uh, bit of an art to doing this properly. So I'll show you how that works. So this is basically the tool yard I have some raw materials here, there are other raw materials up on my shelf um, and so I think what we should do in the next episode I'm going to start laying out one of my uh, models for you uh, so we can get an idea how that works. I'm going to take you through today some of the basics uh, of setting up an aircraft that we want to, uh, we want to build. Um, we need to start off by choosing an aircraft and if you're starting off early I would recommend you choose a simple aircraft. For this exercise I've chosen a Cessna 150 um, in a simple um, A4 piece of paper size just to give you an idea of how this works. Now what's important to notice is that when you select your drawings you should try and select a drawing uh, that has got the profile of the side view of the aircraft. It has a front view of the aircraft and it has a top view. Now I'll get into this later as to why this is important. So coming back to the, the side view. The side view of this particular aircraft, I've got sections here that show me what the fuselage looks like if we were to cut it through here. So this first one here corresponds to a slice through the aircraft fuselage. And what they show us here is half of that. You need to mirror that to make a complete shape. And this one refers to the number two 
and three and so on all the way down to the end of the aircraft. Now these are really great tools you're going to need once we start to build this aircraft. Another thing to, to make sure is familiarize yourself with what this aircraft looks like. So this is a side view, it's a very familiar shape. We see them in the skies all the time. Um, uh, you've got to just check that it's very particular that the nose of this aircraft has a slight bend down. It's got that typical bend up to the propeller. The fuselage at the bottom here is quite flat. And then it goes in a straight line to the tail. Um, the top part of the fuselage, the front part looks like this, where you can see the aircraft is showing you that the wings are pretty flat all the way across the top. Um, there's no camber in the wing. They are pretty flat and straight. And they've got two struts that hold up the aircraft wing. So that gives you a good idea of proportion of how that looks. And then the next one over here shows us the aircraft from the top. Now this is the most one of the most important views is that when we start to build, um, I normally like to start off building the wing. And you can see here that this wing line, it's only in a straight line in this portion of the wing. From here to the wing tip, it tapers back. There's a rake. And there's one on this side too. As well as on the back. And then these two things are straight as well. This shows you the front window of the aircraft and that one shows us the back one. This is the tail fin fillet that comes all the way up to the tail fin which I'll show you about later. So in order to start this one of the first things that I do is I need to understand, I need to decide what size wire I'm going to use in this aircraft. Now I have a number of sizes of wire and you can see them here they're always difficult to pick up because they're so long and gangly but it's, it's important to choose the right size and for the wing I always choose quite a prominent size. This one over here I think is just over one millimeter. Now this is 1.2 millimeters wide brass wire. So this, as you know, comes off a coil that looks something like that. Okay, so what you do is you cut it off in a length of uh, say two feet or so, or one foot. Uh, put the one end into a vise or into a grip, and on the other end you simply pull it with a pair of pliers, stretch it, so that it creates a beautiful straight piece of wire that you can work with. Once we've decided on the size of wire that you're going to be using, and as I said before, this one over here would be about a 1.2 or 1.5 millimeter wire. Um, we're going to cut it in a straight line, let it overhang on each end of the wing size, just by enough that you can manage it and cut it back later. And to keep it in place now, what I do is I put a number of pins here like this. So on either side, once, once I put the piece of wire on the line, I make sure it stays there. I just keep it there with my finger, put another nail on this side. Now it's there, but I want to make sure it stays there. So I'm going to put one in the middle like this. And that's it. That piece of wire is fairly stable. It's not going to go anywhere for now. I need to create that crank that we spoke about. So I take a pair of pliers, put it on the mark, and I bend it according to the line that's there. There is a line there. Make sure this is nice and straight. So it's, 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 it's important to be rather meticulous about this because that way you make sure that the proportions are kept. Remember we're working on a very small scale and if you uh, if you don't respect the sizes properly 
then you're going to start to get a creep. And when you get a creep of one millimeter on a model like this, by the time you finish putting all the pieces together at the end of the line, you could be out by more than a centimeter. So that's how that piece of wire now is staying in a straight line. It's been kept in place. I'm happy that it's not going to go anywhere. The next thing we want to do is that I want to try and take, do the back line of this here now in the same manner as I did this front one. So I'll take another piece of wire and I'm going to just guesstimate the length that I need. The wire is bent, simply I take it in my fingers, two fingers like that, and just pull it straight and you get it back into a straight line like that. So I need a piece again. I'm going to give it a little bit over on this side, a little bit over on that side. I'm going to cut it over there and always the off cuts are kept right here because you're going to use them as the build continues. So there's my back piece of wire. I make sure that its overhang is the same on each side. I've got it on the line at the back. I want to do the same to this like I did to the front. So I'm going to put a nail here and I'm going to put another one on this side. And then one in the middle. There. Now this takes a bit of practice. It's not, um, it's not like it's going to drive you crazy, but it's not hard to do. Now, once again, I need to crank it on that point as the previous one. So you see how it goes on the line like that. If it's not right, I'll just tweak it a bit. Now that I see that it's in position, I'm going to put a nail in there to keep it where I want it. Okay, then I'm going to crank the same on this side. Now respect the drawing that shows you where the crank is. Because if you don't, when you finish this, um, it'll look disproportionate. I can see there, this nail's come out, let me put this back again. So what I have is a piece of wood timber at the bottom here. Uh, it's like a cheat board. It allows me to, um, to nail into and to cut and burn and weld on uh, as the job progresses. So let's put another two nails down here to stabilize this corner. And right, I'm happy that that's all good to go. So now what we're going to do, I'm going to put um, some pieces in between. So for that, I'm going to be doing some welding. Now, with those of you who don't know how to lead solder, uh, good example, take a whole lot of scrap wire, put them down, weld them together, get familiar with how it works. Uh, I'll give you some of the pointers that I've learned over the years. Right, so we've now established the two uh, pieces for the top and bottom. We've followed the canvas, everything is neat. Now we need to tie them together. So what you do here, I'm going to put the a piece of brass wire that I had lying around, some of the scrap that I overcut. You take some of the flux, you always flux every single joint when you weld it. This flux, I have a toothpick that sits in a, a little bucket of flux on the side here. I take my welding iron, I'm going to pick up some lead solder and I'm going to solder this joint just like that. At the end of every solder, you clean your, your solder tip. I'm now going to cut this wire to suit the size that I need, which is roughly there. Um, reposition it nicely. These things do move around on here. That's why we've got the nails to give us a guide. And once you're satisfied that it's all straight and square, it looks good. Another dab of flux onto that joint, pick up a dollop, a small drop of lead and then weld it there. So the idea here is to put the lead onto the tip. Don't try to hold the solder and weld together. You're going to go nuts. Use this hand to hold down what you want to weld, pick up the lead solder from 
your little soldering station and then you wipe off the excess that you haven't used. So there's the one end. While you make sure that this is still properly aligned, come to this side and do the same here. So here I've noticed that the wire has gone a bit out of shape. I want to make sure it stays in shape, so I'm going to weld that one over there. Put a bit of flux on that joint. Make sure it's nice and stable, pick up a little bit of lead, hold it there. Once you see the lead flow from one piece of metal to the other, you know that it's done. Clean your tip off, come back here, everything is still aligned and in shape. I'm going to cut this one now and weld these two together on this corner over here. And then I'm kind of ready to do the next step. So be prepared uh, from time to time. You can see how close my fingers are to this welding site that I'm using and I'm going to get burnt and get warm. Put up with it, it's only for a few seconds and then once your joint is made you can take your finger away and it's all good. Okay so now, now that that's in line you can see that everything is fairly stable, straight. I've respected the outlines, the cambers are all, the curves are all there. I need to put another stabilizing piece of wire in between here so when I take this out of here it doesn't distort and lose its shape so I'm going to use an existing uh, design line on the wing there are two here uh, there's another two close to the fuselage but I'm not going to use those I'm going to use these ones and this one goes right into the crank nook where that previous crank was that we bent it goes right into there I'm going to take that point put a little bit of lead on my soldering iron Bring it in there, once that's taken nicely, let go, clean my tip, go back out and then repeat like I did on the other side where you cut it to size and don't be afraid, sometimes you may cut the lead a little bit short of the size that you want. You can take out your piece and start again or you'll learn how to bridge that gap by using the lead solder. It is possible, it takes a bit of skill. But it's not rocket science, you can get there quite quickly. So now that's the one side, I want to do another one over here so that this is now also providing the stabilization that I want that when I take this out of here, this little piece of framework is pretty stable. There we go. You'll notice that with all the work that I'm doing that looks a little bit fast for you, I'm still making sure that I'm respecting the build lines and proportions must always look clean, neat and tidy. If you're not happy, go back and start again. Because once this is done and you have it come to assembly stage, you're going to be really angry if you haven't done that. Okay, so to continue, here's the, the uh, framework now. I pick it up off here, you can see that these, these verticals are all keeping this little wing all straight aligned and working so that I can use them uh, later on to make sure the proportions are kept correct. I've trimmed the edges so that the edges are nice and clean. Those excessive points that were on here, I've cut them off the same on that side and you end up with a piece of wing that looks like this. If I put it here, you see it lines up perfectly. You can hardly see it on the drawing, but I can assure you that it's right there. If you do that, you can see it. Right, so that basically shows you the outline of how we do the wing. I'm next gonna show you how we do the fuselage, and those are the two critical starting points for a model like this one. They don't all start like this. Some of them are a little bit more complicated, but this is the basic things. What I want you to be sure of taking note of is how everything is kept concise, straight, true, plumb, square. If you're not sure, look at it from the end, sight it, make sure that it looks right, and that way you're going to end up with a nice clean model, and you'll see when we finish this, the beautiful little aircraft. Thank you for watching. Uh, like and subscribe, please. 
and uh, we'll see you in the next clip. Bye now.